Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at another customization that you can implement within Revit, and that is the double click options. Before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, maybe even like it, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That helps me out very much. So let's jump right into this. This should be a pretty simple, pretty quick video, but we're going to look at the double click options within Revit. So maybe you're not familiar with this at all. And so if this is new, awesome. Double click options. There are a few different options that we have when it comes to double clicking certain elements, different types of things in Revit in a sense to where maybe they interact differently with, you know, double clicking different elements. So the idea is that I have options on what those double clicks will do based on the element. Where can we find these options? Well, we can find those options in file, of course, options. And then I'm gonna move this over here and we've got user interface and then double click options right here. So I'm gonna hit customize and immediately we've got all these different things that we can look at. So it says customize the double click settings. Okay, select double click behavior. So the idea is that we have all these different element types that we can respond to with a particular double click action. So I've got element types, we've got family, sketched elements, inside views or schedules on sheets. We've got outside views on sheets, assemblies, groups, and stairs. And so at the right here are all the different default actions that you have that you can take when you double click any of the specific elements at the left. So the idea is if I have a family and I double click that family, I can edit the family. It will open the family. That makes sense. Also, if I have a sketch element, like a floor or something, and I double click that floor, it will edit that element. And so I actually have different options I can choose from. So depending on the type of user that you are, whether you're doing particular things or not, you can change these double click actions to work better for you. So you can double click a particular element and know what's going to happen. So in this case, a family, I can choose to edit the family. And again, I have everything here at the right that's default, and we can start to change this here in a second. But if I want to look at a family, family, and I double click that family, right now it's going to edit the family. It's going to open the family, and you know, as if I want to edit it. So I've got the drop down here, and I can choose do nothing. So like double clicking a family would do nothing, but I can also edit the type, which is kind of cool. So if I double click that family, I don't have to click the family, then come over to the left of the properties panel and click edit type, I can just double click it and boom, edit type. So the idea is maybe you're more prone to edit families. You know, if you are, then I would leave the family, the double click action for the family on edit family. So you can just quickly do that instead of having to click the family and then go up and edit the family and click the actual button to edit the family. Whereas if you're not really editing families, then it just makes sense that you would Put this on edit type so you boom double click the family and you're already editing the type of that family it makes sense i tend to edit more families but well i'll leave it there so now that we've seen all these different options let's go ahead and see what happens i'll hit okay and again these are all going to be the defaults but i've got a family a floor i went ahead and made an assembly here i've got a group and then some stairs which were all the different options that we had as far as double click options so let's go ahead and take this family for instance and let's double click that and as soon as I double click it, boom, the family pops up. Okay, easy enough. That makes sense. But if I come back here and I go to my options once again, I go to my user's interface and then double click options. And then I change that from edit family to edit type under the family. I can hit okay. Okay. And then once I go and double click this desk again, boom, the type properties come up. This is a really nice, really easy way of doing this. So let's go ahead and double click this floor. As soon as I do that, I get the sketch. That seems to make sense. You know, if you're editing lots of sketches or whatever, great. Okay, cool. But I can always come back here to my options and change those double click settings for the sketched element from edit that element to edit type. Cool. Now maybe I, maybe you're at the point in the project where you're like, okay, I have all my floors drawn. I don't need to worry about that, but I might need to edit some of the properties of those floors. So I can just double click my floor and then the type properties come up. Really, really simple, really easy, easy to change. And you can quickly change it back if you want to. Like for me, I, I probably want to change it back because I don't, I want to be able to actually edit that element. Now, something to note also is that you can always put all of these to nothing, to do nothing. You can have 
no double click actions in all of Revit. You could just have everything turned off. Or maybe you're like, oh, I just tend to double click groups so much. I, I just accidentally do it. Well, you can double click groups and have that do nothing. That makes sense. So let's look at the rest of these options that we have that are now set to default. So I've got an assembly and I can just double click the assembly and boom, I'm editing that assembly. Great. I've got a group here. I can double click that group. I'm already editing that group. That's great. I'm in the group. And then double clicking the stairs. I, boom, I'm in the stairs. I am working on the stairs. Makes sense. Now, we also have sheets. You know, you're very, you're probably familiar with this if you work with sheets, but I've got a sheet here with just a level one floor plan view on it. And I can just double click the view. It activates the view. And then I can double click outside of the view and then deactivate the view. It just, it makes sense. Of course, I've got a, a title block family here, so I can double click this. And this will bring up my type properties because I have that particular setting set up that way. But when it comes to really anything else, you're free to change these as much as you want. So I, again, I probably want this on edit family, edit the element. But like before, we can change all of these to other things. So like, Instead of activating a view, I can have that do nothing. So I can actually have to right click it and activate a view. For the inside views, schedules on sheets, and then outside views on sheets, I don't know a place where you'd want to turn this off because I find it really simple to just double click in the view or out of the view to activate it or deactivate it. Now, again, maybe with assemblies, groups, or stairs, you want to edit the particular type. Maybe you want to do nothing if you tend to click lots of things, but with the group, maybe I want to edit the type. Maybe I'm done editing my groups. I don't need to worry about that anymore. And so instead of double clicking my group and seeing all the uh, adding elements to that particular group and editing that group itself, I get the properties of that group and I can duplicate it, rename it, whatever. Really simple. So that's going to do it for this video. We looked at all the different options as far as customizing the double click settings that you have within Revit. It's pretty simple. There's not a lot to it, but it is pretty powerful in a sense that you can set all these different elements to do whatever you want as far as double clicking. It, it, it's really helpful. It saves a lot of time. Depending on where you are in your project can even save a lot more. So I hope you learned something. If you did, demolish that like button really helps me out a lot. Also, change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. There will be lots more videos coming out very soon. I sure hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.